Shalom family. It came to me that we can't get mad at white people for taking care of white people. It's a perfectly normal thing to do. There's nothing wrong with it. But when I hear our people speak on it, for some reason we tend to think that it's something wrong with white people looking out for white people, what's going to benefit them, what's going to um, help them to grow, help them to even maintain their supremacy. That's what they look out for, right? <clears throat> or their perceived um, supremacy. Every other racial group does this. You have Latinos that do it, Asians, um, um, Arabs. All of these other racial groups look out for what's best for their group. Now the only people who don't do that is so-called black people. See, we've been trained so well to where we now believe that it's wrong to look out for your own people especially here in America, especially here in America, so-called black people here tend to believe that we're supposed to look out for the good of mankind, you know, look out for everybody else. As a matter of fact, we even take it a step further. We will look out for everybody else before we look out for ourselves. And in some cases, we don't look out for ourselves at all. And if any other so-called black person even hints at the thought of wanting to look out for black people, um, you have other blacks who will jump on the bandwagon with other races and call you a black supremacist. You see how we're always talking about this, the sickness that our people have? That's part of the sickness to where we have been trained to think that it's wrong to look out for ourselves while everybody else in our faces, they ain't even hiding it, they're in our faces looking out for their own kind looking out for their own kind but somehow it's become a cardinal sin to some of us no if you black and you look out for black you wrong you sinning we need to take some notes from these other racial groups i'm not saying learn their ways you know the scripture says learn not the ways of the heathen but we need to take some notes as it relates to how we deal with one another if we were to take the same mindset of blacks taking care of blacks that white people have and that Asians have and Latinos have and Arabs and all these other groups, if we were to take that same attitude, then I believe that we would begin to see a sharp rise in our position. But because we are so divided, as a matter of fact, there's a scripture for that. The scripture says, a kingdom or a nation divided against itself cannot stand, period. It's almost as like that is a curse that has been spoken on us. Although it's right there in the word, it's telling us the reason why we're not standing is because we're divided against each other. That division is so great among so-called black people. I mean, even over there in Africa, even over there in Africa, you have the continent that was divided up first by the enemy. All the European nations came and said, this is my piece of the African pie. This is my piece. This is your piece, that piece, this piece. Once they divided it up, it stayed that way. You see, now our people over here, first of all, Judah already divided himself or separated himself from the other 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, now once Judah did that, he he already had a divisive or divided type mentality so he already divided himself from the other nations i'm sorry from the other tribes then when he came over here he further divided himself okay now of course we do know that there was some aid to that during slavery but the problem or the issue is this after slavery was abolished or at least in part we still kept that mentality of being divided we still kept it, so it's a mentality now. We don't have to be divided now. We can come together if we wanted to. We can come together in power, knowing and understanding the power of Yah. But the problem is, most of us don't know or understand the power of Yah, and we don't want to know and understand the power of Yah, or the power of togetherness and cohesion. We don't want to know, we don't care to know, we think it's a waste of time. And since we treat it like it's a waste of time, that's why it is. Most of us, even those who do manage to get enough courage to attempt to come together, even with that, there's always this other mess you have to deal with. You have to deal with people's up and down, wishy-washy attitudes. One day they smiling at you, the other day they frowning. 
the other sometimes they want to talk to you and you're friendly sometimes they're not there's just all this division you start a restaurant business um, with your cousin and then one day you go in um, everything is all fine and dandy the next day you go in all of a sudden they want to shut the shop down they don't want to be in business with you anymore you ask them why I don't know you know what if this stuff wasn't so sad it would be funny as I don't know what it's like we be we've become a comedy act we as so-called black people have become a comedy act we sit back and we complain about white people taking care of white people and all these other groups taking care of each other you see you see how much the Asians stick together you see how much them Arabs stick together well how come we can't stick together are we dumb and clueless to where we can't figure out that sticking together is the only way we are going to rise are we that ignorant as a people do we not understand what it means when the scripture says that a, ki a kingdom or a nation divided against itself cannot stand do we not understand that Within the white race, you have so much success in terms of what they've been able to achieve. Now, how they got it, I mean, that's something totally different. We ain't going to talk about how they got it because I'm trying to get you to see a point here. Excuse me, y'all. When I see certain bugs, they cause me to jump. But anyway, when you look at how white people, they have this mentality of, I'm going to go and get it. I'm going to take charge of my environment and I'm going to make it happen. They have that mentality. And the mentality that we have as a people is to sit back and make excuses or we sit back here and we look at this person over there or we look at that person over there and we've determined in our minds that um, I'm mad at her or I'm mad at him. Look at what, and, and, and see, we don't ever come up with the real reason why we're mad. We come up with something else. We create a reason in our dumb, stupid mind. We come up with a reason to dislike this brother over here or dislike that sister or dislike this family or dislike that organization or this camp or that church or whatever. We come up with reasons, you see, because there's not always a reason there. But in our ignorant minds as a people, we, we create reasons. We are dividing our own selves because we are divided in our own minds. This is why the scripture says, um, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That goes for women too. Double-minded women are unstable in all their ways. You see, because our people are so double-minded, this is where you get this wishy-washiness from. We can't concentrate on trying to heal ourselves as a people because we're so busy concentrating on how to pull one another down, how to divide each other, how to be in, uh, at odds with each other, how to be opposition against each other. That's what we focus on more. And like I said, many times we'll come up with reasons to hate somebody. You'll sit back and you'll look at somebody from a distance. you sit there and look. You ain't even got to know them personally. You ain't never shook their hand, met them personally. You, only, you might only see them um, on Facebook, uh, see their profile picture. Or you might see them on YouTube or see them on other social media. Or you just see them online. You see them and you determine within yourself that you can't stand this person. Don't even know him personally. What kind of ignorant mess is that? Now, <clears throat> we may not agree with everything that each other do and everything that each other say and how every how each of us feel about this, that, and the other. You have some people who believe that um, women wearing, a pan wearing pants is a sin. You have some people that don't believe it's a sin, but we'll take something that simple and we'll blow it up in our ignorant minds to something so big and we'll determine that, you know what, this person is not worthy of my love. This person is not worthy of my um, friendship. This person ain't worthy of nothing. As a matter of fact, I can't stand them. It sounds like we are mentally ill as a people. That's why the scripture said that we would be mad. We, when we get over here in the land in Deuteronomy chapter 28, it said we we're going to be mad. And then um, there's another passage that says that our young men are going to be on the streets like wild bulls. It's like we're going out of our cotton-picking crazy minds as a people. And sit, sitting back whining and fussing and complaining about white people taking care of white people. I just don't know what to say sometimes, family. I just don't know what to say. All I know is it's becoming more and more evident that we have got to separate ourselves from that kind of foolishness and nonsense. If people want to stew in that, if people want to 
um, live that kind of life and have those kind of thoughts and think that kind of way, let them. Okay? There's not much you can do to change a person's minds. Once they've settled on stupid, just let them stay there. If that's where a person wants to stay, just let them stay. You can't beg a person out of stupid. You can't train them out of stupid. You can't drag them out of it. You can't pull them out of it. If that's where they want to be, you got to let them go. <sighs> well, you know what? The fall season is coming up on us. And after the fall, you know, fall represents the time where all the leaves begin to fall to the ground. The air gets more crispy. Things start to change right before our eyes, before the dead of winter comes. Most of us wait to fall before we start trying to figure things out. And then we only have a short time before we start trying to scurry about to see what we can do to prepare for the dead season, winter. We like to wait. We, we like to wait till the last minute. And, then, and if we don't do anything at all, what we do is we, we come up with this ignorant mentality of, okay, I'm going to take what you got. Since you are this kind of way, I'm going to take what you have. Since you got all of this stuff and I didn't prepare and you did, I'm just going to come and take what you have. That's how our people think. Well, I pray that the Most High will begin to open up the eyes of those who wish to see. Okay? Those who want to stay darkened in their um, ignorant mentality, want to keep complaining about what white folk doing for white folk and how they take care of their own. And you don't want to lift a finger to take care of another black person or try to um, lend any type of, make any type of effort towards securing a better future for our people. Some of us don't even pray for it, you know. I know um, it takes finances to do things, and not everyone has the, the money to build a big mansion to the sky. But some of us won't even open our mouths to utter a word of prayer for black folk. But yet we praying for this wicked nation. We praying for the presidents. We praying for, for people who would chop your head off if they can get away with it. We pray for all of that kind of stuff, but we won't pray for black folk. There is a special kind of ignorance going on among our people to the point where we just don't seem to want to get it. It's not that the clues aren't there. We just don't seem to want to get it. We want to sit around, waste all of our time, and let winter creep up on us while everybody else rises to the top. We sink into the bottom. Shalom, family.